Welcome tonight to our webinar, uh, Stradivantures. Every Monday we have a, a industry webinar. And if you don't mind, uh, can you just give us somewhat of a, a chime in on the chat if you can hear us? We've been ha we had a little uh, technical difficulty. So if you can check in on the chat, uh, Enid will give us a thumbs up that you can hear us if you don't mind doing that for us. We'd appreciate that. Okay, we got somebody clicking in on the chat. You see up there, Ariana, at the top? It says, chat so, so Enid's got control of that all right excellent you close that all right guys thank you so much for joining us this evening my name is Diego Mello with Stradivantures and I have some of our vendor members and also SVI members that have uh, are going to be spending time with us this evening talking about five ways to save money on your project so let's go ahead and get started uh, if you don't mind go ahead uh, we're starting you can move to the next slide. <clears throat> um, so we're going to go ahead and get to an introduction here for everybody uh, to, so we can get to know them a little bit. And then we're going to move into the Q&A section, guys. This is a presentation talking about the five ways to save time and money here. So let's, I guess we're behind the eight ball. We can start. Go ahead. If you're joining us here as new participants, Remember that your uh, Zoom has a lot of key function buttons you can mute. You can also stop video if you have that function availability. Also, if you have questions, please feel free to ask questions in the Q&A that you see there on your bottom of your screen. And then also down at the chat is if you need to send some information over to the moderator. And if you also wanna go ahead and, um, um, uh, if you also wanna go ahead and adjust your, um, uh, leave the webinar, feel free to go ahead. I think you need your camera <clears throat> All right, uh, to get to know us a little bit better, um, you can visit us here on uh, uh, investorrealestatetraining.com. I apologize guys, we're having a little bit of technical difficulties here. One moment, Nina, your, your camera's showing. Yes, I am trying to. And Oriana, you can go ahead and, and if you go ahead and go to her screen, go to where her picture is. To the right, there you go. You can go ahead and stop it. Yeah. All right, thank you guys, sorry about that. To, a little, to learn a little bit more about us, feel free and go to investorrealestatetraining.com and then uh, we'll have some great information there. Feel free to chime in. All right, one of our panelists here is gonna be Maria Rodriguez. Uh, just to get to know her a little bit more, Maria, you, you were born in Hinotepe, Nicaragua. You live in Houston, Texas, right? Uh, married with two kids, a son and a daughter, and you attended Catholic high school in Nicaragua, and you studied business administration. And you're also the founder of Home Selection Consulting, which does a lot of work with a lot of the SVI members. Excellent. Welcome. We'll be sure to ask you some great questions today. Let's move on to our next participant, Jolanda Thomas. A um, lot of accolades there. You know, <laughs> when I was putting them in, that was really important to get those. You retired in 2016 after working, was it 30 years as a district manager for the Social Security Administration? And if you look at all the accolades that she has, a lot of them are in training and business management. But I want to know a little bit about Harper Grace. <laughs> Absolutely. Harper Grace. Who's Harper Grace? That's my granddaughter. The granddaughter. All right. You said she was like the jewel of the family. Okay. <laughs> okay. So that's good. All right. And if you want to get to know uh, Jolanda better, all the contact information will be there. And then we have Eric Christie. You know, Eric Christie is a professional home inspector with Boxer Inspections, and he's been, I guess, you've been an SBI member for how long? Uh, six years now. About six years, and you took on the role of becoming a home inspector, and a lot of our members use your services and knowledge, obviously, to mitigate risk, and that's something we're going to talk about this evening. Um, also, you are a key speaker in some of the uh, RIA meetings that are out there, obviously, knowing that home inspection is very important. And don't forget, guys, that you can chime in some questions as we get to the Q&A section. So start, start to think about some of the questions you can be asking some of the people that are on the panels. And then obviously we have Jesus Martinez, one of our key contractors, and he's kind of like frozen right now. But, uh, you know, you founded Martinez Home uh, Services, and you have about 15 years experience That's right. in, in uh, renovation, and you recently got into new construction, right? So, so obviously that's something. We can speak up just a tad so we can hear you because the mic will catch it. 
Yes, and, then, and also you own your own crews, which is very important. For the, yeah, for the simplicity that I'm assuming quality, expertise, mm -hmm. and knowing exactly that the job will get done. That is correct. I have some employees and I also have some subcontractors that I use for uh, the most important pieces. All right. All right, excellent, excellent. So we're gonna move on now, guys, over to the, the key points and topics of what we're gonna be talking about tonight. Importance of having a system and a team in place. We're also gonna talk about initial property considerations. Basically, Yolanda, that's gonna be your end there for realtors and property sourcing. And pre-offer and pre-listing inspections. Eric, you know, for the home inspection realm. Maria, we got you for selections and design. That's for materials fit and finish. And then the do's and the don'ts during your project. We're going to ask as soon as, because those are really big things. So let's go ahead and dive in on that. So let's go ahead and this is their contact information. We'll be showing that at a second. So let's go ahead and cancel, stop the share. And we can open up the camera to, uh, to the full spectrum here. All right. So let's see here. Who do we have first on our list here? We had Ms. Yolanda, right? All right. So I want to ask you a couple of questions. And guys, feel free to, to ask questions here. Uh, so Jolanda, as saving time and money is especially important to an investor, you being an investor yourself and taking a role as a realtor for SBI members and others, here's a few questions for you, okay? All right. What do you look for when pulling comps for a new property that someone sends in the investor world and mentality? Absolutely. Thank you so much. And I'm so excited to be here. So uh, when I get that uh, lead from an investor, I have uh, some parameters that I look at. And so it's real important to first know what the investor is looking for because they've already either working with a wholesaler or uh, pulling that property themselves. But what I have resources as a realtor, I'll go into MLS and I'm looking for things to be able to pull comps and have those comps really fit for the investors so that they can do their due diligence. But when I'm pulling those comps, I'm looking for things like uh, quarter mile radius. And I'm looking for the year built. I'm comparing the subject property, looking at the year built. And I do about a, a 10 year parameter there. It's a year built. I look at um, the lot size and the square footage. And then I give the uh, investor about three comps that we have as realtors so that okay. they can do their own due diligence. Excellent. I think one of the most important things that we always get back from our members is when you give them, you don't give them an actual ARV. You give them a range and then you let them determine that's the range they want to go with, right? It's basically saying that if somebody goes to the $5 black deck tables or they're at the high roll or $100 black deck tables, even if I don't know if that $100 is being considered high roller, but, but that's a great point. So here's the second question. What makes a good area for someone to invest in if they're thinking about investing in an area? Right. Well, it really is up to the investor. You know, they may have some affinity to a particular neighborhood. Maybe they, they grew up there and they have uh, some type of affinity. But if not, then one of the uh, reports that we have access to is called the Realist Report. And so it will give a, a wealth of information because what you're looking for is the health of that neighborhood. So you're looking for things. In fact, I have one uh, here. You're looking for things such as the population. Mm -hmm. You're looking for uh, marital status in that area because it's drilling down to that subject property. And it'll talk about uh, the educational. One of the things that I like to look at, it's called the uh, educational um, client educational climate index. And so it's just giving you a full picture of what that neighborhood uh, presents so that again, they can add that to their um, process of doing their due diligence. Right, and you also, I, I know, give us a sense of when we get to that fork in the road, everybody, of deciding whether this is a rental or a flip, mm -hmm. you kind of look at the occupancy status. Absolutely. And that occupancy status determines what? That lets them know whether the health, again, the health of the neighborhood, is it a lot of viable, sustainable uh, people living there to help? Because depending on the exit strategy for the investor, it helps them know what they want to be able to right. do. Right. It could be a rental or it could be an actual flip or an active investment. That is All right. 
So why is it important for a realtor to be there from the beginning of a project all the way through the end? It is paramount. In my opinion, it is paramount. We add that value to help the investor from beginning to end. We have the tools, we have the resources. A lot of the information are, uh, is available based on consumer uh, availability, just on our resource, uh, Houston Association of Realtors, but we have resources that is all pulled together for us. For us. So uh, that helps. And then by following the project, I can watch everything from beginning to end to see when, as Maria is doing the uh, collections and things like that, I can follow along. So when it's time to list that property, I have that inside knowledge. So value, value saving time, saving money, and ha having that relationship. Right. Excellent. Thank you. Thanks. So, do you have any, uh, like a statement or anything that you want to uh, well, advise? I, I think that's just it. Having relationships and depending on your team. And I can tell you, SDI, that's what I most appreciate about SDI. Okay. Thank you so much. We, we appreciate that. Now we're going to move on. Obviously, you've identified an area, and then all of a sudden you found this property, and then you're getting super excited on the on the numbers, and you're getting super excited on the emotional level starting to rise up, and then you call this guy right here, Eric Christie. <laughs> so when our when our members or if you guys are ever looking to buy into a property, make sure that you always have a reputable, knowledgeable, and friendly inspector. And so we rely so much on Eric for his knowledge because having that opinion. And having that that other kind of like uh, little angel on your shoulder to tell you stop or don't go or you know what jump on this is vital. So Eric, you yourself also understand that saving time is money, especially in this world of investing. And you're also an investor. Yep. And then you also do the home inspections for SBI members and other members. Correct. So I've got some questions for you. Shoot. All right. Let's hear. Get ready, guys. Eric's awesome here. Um, <clears throat> Why is it important for you to work with an investor? Why is it important for you to work with the investor in the pre-offer stage? Because Diego said so. No, I did. It's number one. <laughs> so the thing you have to remember when you're buying a house, especially investment properties, you make your money when you buy the house. And hopefully everybody's heard that a bunch of times, but that's what's so important. Because if you pay too much for the house and your repairs are too high, you're going to get behind. You're going to get under, underneath, uh, and behind, and that's not where you want to be. So. Ensuring that you have paid the right amount for the, for the house and knowing what you got to put into it and that you're meeting your rehab budget and your exit strategy, that's super important. So if you don't have that information, then you got to go get it. Okay. Also, I know what's amazing services that you offer is that somebody wants to go do a pre-inspection walk or, or pre-purchase walk, okay. you're, you will walk through that property and get that insight in. Yeah, we use a, it's it's an opinion. So right. it's, it's getting my opinion on what your exit strategy is and looking at the property and saying, hey, this is where I want to go with it. And they said, okay, well, these are the things that you probably need to take a look at based upon whatever your budget is going to be. Right, so that's where that emotional uh, deactivation happens because I've been on it before and you're all excited and at the end you leave with, let's go get lunch, Eric. Yeah. Uh, you know, thanks well, for it's saying. not trying to deflate the balloon, but, but you're trying to put some rationale into yeah. that decision of buying a house and moving forward with it. All right. Now, what are the main items a person should consider when looking at a property that are overlooked all the time that are going to cause overruns and, and, and repairs? Um, the big three are always uh, roofs, foundations, and air conditioners, probably in that order. Um, those are typically the, the high ticket items. But a lot of times when you've, if you've gone to a house and you've taken care of those items and there's really no foundation repairs, you replace the roof, you replace the air conditioner, you made the inside pretty, but there's a lot of maintenance items that are around the outside of the house and the inside of the house that we tend to look for as inspectors. And for, when you're looking at a house as a, to buy it as your personal home, there's two things that are probably gonna make people walk away. One is if they find a major issue, leak in the roof, foundation's got a giant crack in it, windows and doors have problems, or there's just a long list of small items. And if they see that and there's a lot of issues with the house, even if they're not very serious, then they tend to think, oh, there must be some other issue that we don't see. Okay, now you just said something that's very important. A lot of the big ticket items, as we like to call those, right? Your mechanical, electrical, and your plumbing factors. There are companies that will offer free inspections, right? Absolutely. To get those. So why not get free inspections, right? 
and then you can do it. And then when you go out there and do this type of, of opinion based on it, does that give direction now when we start working with that young man? Well, it does when it, it depends on their budget. So if we mm -hmm. look at a you know water heater's useful life eight to twelve years, and so if you got a water heater that's seven years old, do you want to replace it or not? It kind of depends upon what your budget is and what your exit strategy. Okay. So if your if your budget allows for it, maybe that's something that you want to consider and add to the list. It's going to be a rental. Milk it for as long as you can. Okay. You know, get it checked out. Make sure it's operating properly, and then use it as long All as you right. can. And this is actually a technique that we use, and you actually were the one that that we, we we realized that when you were trying to tell us this, but then we caught on that you know should you get a home inspection pre-listing the property on the MLS once it's finished. Well, that's a, that's something you certainly want to talk to your realtor about before okay. you do that, because anything that you're informed about, you have to disclose. But in the case of real estate investing, it's kind of a unique situation because if you've inspected the house before you bought it, then you know about the defects that were in there. So you went in and you fixed them, you rehab the house, and now you're at the, the point of selling it. And then when you go to the disclosure, it asks you, what was an inspection done in the last year? So you answer yes. So now you have an inspection report that was pre-repairs. Do you want to share that with your with your future client? And that's what you realtor you need to talk to your realtor and find out whether that's one whether you, that's something that you want to do. Okay. On a lighter note, we we, I lo we love it when you post. Get this. Watch this. This you know. <laughs> lots this of videos. Goes, lots, lots of, of videos. videos. And and I thought one of the coolest ones that we saw was he actually you did with a thermal camera. You oh, yeah, saw a, house. a wall that was literally a beehive, right? Yep. The whole That's twice. wall. Yeah, twice now. Twice. I mean, yep. guys, your wall now is a honeycomb. I mean, oh yeah. I mean, we're talking like go in there and bite that honey. <laughs> awesome. Do you have any any you know considerations, any type of opinions that you might want the people to hear? Um, just remember that your resources are out there. Uh, that's why you joined SBI. Is that's one of the big things that they offer is resources, and you can't you can't know you can't do everything. So rely on those the people that are available. It's not just me. It's your contracting services, your real estate services, even this this brain over here. Pick this one when you can, um, because there's good knowledge in the group. Okay, I appreciate that. All right, so we found the property area. We've got the inspector opinion. We've gone ahead and run our numbers. We, we got everything into our deal analyzers. Guys, at SBI, we have amazing deal analyzers that give a perspective of risk. And one of those big things is knowing that when you do remodel a house, you've got your contractor and then you also have what's called your selections and design. So now at that level comes the, what we see, and this is Maria with Home Selection Consulting, um, we see that HGTV, <laughs> I'm going to remodel this sucker the way I want to, yeah. right, mentality, not to, not to until Maria gets a hold of your scope of work and tells you, stop right there. <laughs> it's not in the budget, right? That's one of her favorite things to say. So Maria, again, you also, you know, as saving time and money is especially important to an investor, you being an investor yourself and taking a role in the selections and design and project management. For an SBI member or others, which we invite a lot of you guys to get to know us, uh, here are a few questions for you. Okay. When considering the selections and design for a project, why is it important to work with a professional? It's very important because um, what I do, I like to walk the property. We can figure it out what, what the plan is going to be. We love to check the cons that she will give us, what Eric um, is providing us. So we start um, getting all the materials. You want to go with your comps around and selecting the, the right material. You, you don't want to be going out of budget. So that's one of the ways that, that I, lo I love to do with my clients. Walk around, start looking for the materials. And um, at, at the end, it's very easy because with me, I like to work with the contractor. So the project goes smooth. We're going step by step. It, it kind of sounds that after or the role that we play as investors, once we've analyzed our data and made a decision to take action, we're relying really on the professional side to move that into a profitable transaction. That's the side of team, right? That yeah. that's a hundred percent where I just noticed that our sign is completely backwards. <laughs> Sorry, guys. Back there. <laughs> On the video, 
Um, sorry, guys, Stroud Adventures is backwards. So you have to remember Stroud Adventures. <laughs> Oh, uh, okay, so what are the main issues that cause projects to be delayed when it comes to selection and design? When we get all the material collection ready, ready to purchase, um, one of the issues is the delay of materials. We have to purchase all the materials right away. Why? Because materials go out of stock, price go high, and then we spend it more or waiting for materials to arrive. Yeah, you, you and I were at Florida Core this past week, and Saul, who is the, I think the new general manager for that location in Caden, Texas, he said that so many people had ordered so much material that they were pretty much warehousing this for everybody and that the material was leaving faster and being stocked. So material goes by very, very quick. So the plan is you, we, we design, we got the plan right away, start shopping. Yep. You got your material on time. You save money because right now the market is so crazy, people are buying a lot, so prices are getting higher. Okay. And what are the common mistakes made by investors that cause them to waste time and eventually money? They put their emotions on the houses. Ooh. So they think uh, it's not investing, it's uh, for them. So at the end, spend more, more money and material. And, and, you know, when you have the house, you have to go all the process move and make the right choices. But when they put their emotions, we're out of control. Okay, so without naming names, one of the last projects that or that you're currently working on, you did a full selection, and then you went and sat with the member, priced it out line by line, and then what happened? We started changing the. <laughs> you started started changing the. Started changing the, the scopes, changing the line item. And, and trying to. You know, we think uh, let's, let's get this one, and at the end, we're trying to mark it up and to save money, but at the end, it's making delays and changes. The, you know, at the time that we go back to the realtor, we're going to have problems. Right. So, there is definitely, guys, communication lines here, and, and all the vendors and all the people that, 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 that are part of SVI or, or that we rely on also, they're all within communication of each other. And that's huge because it's about getting to the end result of, of a goal, right? And that's making it profitable, having a good time, and not being crazy. That's why we're going to leave the, one of the last sections here for Mr. Jesus. <laughs> because, guys, finding a reliable contractor right now in this industry is hard to do. Um, one of the things that we do at SBI is we take your contractor and try to figure out a way to make them better. How to figure out a way to get them to be more accessible to the benefits that we offer and also working with the team so you know you recently or, or during the freeze you did some work at our house and the, the the insane thing about that is that we were the only house in our neighborhood that was already in and out and done while everybody else was waiting on their things to be done that is because we work with great people we work with people that say they'll do this, they'll get it done, and most of all, very, very accessible on the price points. So again, yourself, as soon as you've worked with us so many times, I've got a lot of questions for you, because this is very important. Would we agree that the contracting side, guys, is important? Right, roll up your sleeves. All right. You only prepared for three, all right? So guys, let's see if you guys can post some questions up. We'll get started on those questions here in just a little bit. Uh, what are some issues a project can have that can cost time and money overruns? Uh, of course, uh, you can hear Eric. Uh, what can what can happen? But me being on on the job place in a house that is not pre-inspected, uh, I'm the one that has to give always the bad news to the to the homeowner or to the to the buyer because buying a home that is not pre-inspected, it can cause a lot of issues down the road. And and I want to just go over uh, about foundation problem. Yeah. Uh, when there's foundation problems in the house, it's not only foundation, but it can also be uh, underground uh, underground plumbing. Uh, and you're looking at a big chicken item right there, uh, two of them. Uh, there's also uh, termites. I always insist on, on check for termites because uh, on, on the project, on the current uh, project I'm working on, um, I insist on checking on termites, but they say uh, it was cast, they fix it. 
But we ended up repairing almost the, house, the top of the house. We replaced all the walls, all the in the inside and the outside. So that was a big change to to, to the estimate I, I started with. So I will insist on that. Okay, so for so let's come, let's stop there. So for foundation, let's say if you do happen to not catch things because of the non pre inspection or factors like that, what are the time delays and approximately what kind of of, of money setbacks are we talking about to a project? Well, just in time for foundation, it could take a week, uh, up to two weeks, if, if uh, it's a house on, on slab, uh, because they have to do tunnels, they have to dig tunnels, trenches, and and uh, it's only foundation. If, if, if you're looking at repair plumbing, there's another another whole week just to repair plumbing. So you're, you're, if you have to repair some of the underground plumbing because of the foundation issues, you said that could be cast iron, right? I think we yeah. noticed that they have cast iron issues in the underground plumbing. And I mean, and obviously we have to also get some type of city inspection and of course and approval. Yeah, it, 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 if you're dealing with uh, city inspection, then the, the foundation part will take longer because there's a, then you have to be up to code when you're filling, when, when you're back filling the hole you did because uh, the inspector is gonna come and check that you did it right. Excellent. <clears throat> on the pressure test, the sewer system. Yeah, and all that. Too. What about uh, for termites? What kind of setbacks? I mean, well, termites, uh, if you catch them one time, uh, it can only be sheer rough maybe in the inside. Uh, but if, if they're already in the house, um, I, I just learned one new thing about termites. I, I, I always assume that the termites live in the stubs, like in your wood. And I just learned from a professional that they, the colony lives underground. The, 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 the wood in the house is just their, their source of food and they, they go, go down and, and, and live on the, on the ground. So I just learned that from, from a, a specialist termite guy. Okay. So it, it's better to do a, a good treatment with a specialist. Okay. And we, we learned also something called termite rain. Have you guys ever heard what termite rain is? So you're walking around the house and if you put your ear to the sheetrock and you bang on the sheetrock, you'll hear the mud tunnels that they create behind the sheetrock and you'll hear it start falling to the ground and that sounds like rain, like a rain stick. And guys, you could beat the wall and if you start to hear that all over the place, there's a good indication. You know, now let, me, let me ask this question here. You deal with termites, right? And you actually have, you have certifications for that, right? What's the worst thing that could happen to a house? Well, be undetected for a very long time. So they affect the structure of it. I think that there was an investor that had a house where they, um, the house was flooded during Harvey. So it basically just kind of killed the colony. But because of the damage that was done, the back of the house was actually disconnected from the sides of the house. Wow. So there was about a six inch gap <laughs> at the bottom of the wall in the back of the house. Free air conditioning. Uh, yeah, that's yeah. crazy. Yep, yep, yep. Wow. And so what another big ticket item, I, rem I know that you tell some of our members is plumbing right yeah, plumbing because uh, you know you have to know the cast iron it's not a flexible material so if, if you're gonna raise the house because of foundation then you have some some uh, fractures in, in in your system now you have to replace your underground and it also affects the the um uh, the interior of the house too because working with cast iron it's it's another another thing okay how about this one here? How important is the project communication and finance communication between the both of you guys, you and the client? It's a uh, very important. Uh, I'm always, um, I'm, I always tell my customer, feel free to call me, to text me, uh, no matter what time it is, if you have questions, if you have doubts, uh, before the, even before he purchased the house. I, I always like when they call me and say, I got this house, I want to go look at it. Mm -hmm. uh, I, I always make the time to go with them because that's how I can I can be realistic with them and tell them it's a good uh, it, it's a good home to fix or, or I can tell them right away the bad news and and that saves some some uh, headaches down the road. Yeah, excellent. And I know one of the, the things that you would always talk to us about is the communication prior to making the offer is the scope of work you also talked to them about the possible inspections that are going to happen draws and also what kind of funding is going to happen when they work with you because i think those guys are some of the most overlooked things 
when you're already in the project. And then you're like, well, how many draws do we have? How are we getting the money over to the contractor? So that's also is time, right? It's super time consuming. Yeah, that's why we plan uh, or, or the total uh, com completion of the work we plan ahead of time. Uh, we also break it in phases. I like to break it in phases, phase one, phase two, phase three. And we also, we, all the time we make like six phases and um, every phase we talk, we discuss. And um, I always tell, tell my customers that be prepared with the funding for the first phase. That way then there's no delays on it. Uh, and, and communication is key in, in all the process. Right, awesome. Uh, during the project, you said that things can change, right? A lot of things can change, yes. What kind of things can change during a project? Well, it, recently in, in the project that we're working on, uh, we quoted back in, in October. Uh, unfortunately, the, the market uh, for building materials has changed drastically. Uh, it was, yeah, it was, not agree on that. <laughs> it was, uh, uh, it was so sad that I had to tell the bad news to my customers. And, but also it's a, it's a learning lesson for me too, as a, as a uh, contractor. Uh, so uh, we have to be careful with this. Okay. Now, I guess uh, when we, when we asked you to join us here on the panel, you said something about do's and don'ts, right? Give us some examples of do's and don'ts for things when people work with a contractor that can hurt their time, possible money changes when they're working with them. Well, um, I would say, do not, uh, when you go and visit a house or you go and look into a house, do not assume, do not assume that it's, it's in good shape. I always get a call from my uh, customers and they say, oh, I got this house, it's in, it's in good shape. It just need this, it just need that, but it, it doesn't work that way. Uh, it's better to just less, yeah, it just, we're just going to paint it and, and play some baseboard and that's it, but it's, it's not the case. Uh, so do not assume the house is in a good shape until you have uh, expertise uh, advice from either an inspector or a uh, reliable contractor that they work on. Oh, I think, I think you hit the nail on the head with the right, don't assume that. Because guys, when you're looking at real estate transactions, there's going to be that emotional side to it. And so with that, I think, when, when we open this webinar up is time is so important to us. And we always, I believe we're so rich in time, but we always say we never have enough time, right? And so in this business, we're constantly spending time looking at the bad things. How quickly can we move from a bad thing to a good thing, knowing that we have this types, these types of opinions, these types of validated uh, expertise and numbers that'll allow us to move on to the right thing. Um, when you said assume, it's the same thing when we're when we're analyzing transactions and helping our members. Any email or any phrase when they come to us and say, "Oh, I got a great deal," right? We're like, "Stop right there." It's not a deal until it's got validated comps, validated repairs, validated selections, validated funding. Guys, that's a worthy transaction. Worthy transaction. Um, let's go ahead and go into some questions here, guys. I know we've got a couple. Uh, let's see down at the bottom. Yeah. <clears throat> let's see. Uh, that's a great question, Diane. You said, does the realtor have any say in the design choices? What, yeah. what I will say to that, uh, I leave, we try to leave the uh, expertise to the expert, but as a part of the comps that we provide, we show pictures of what the area looks like so that you can have an idea of if you're, you know, what you, especially to get the ARV that you're looking for. So we provide, you know, that information. So. Okay, okay. Have you ever had to tell uh, somebody um, that's, that's like not the right level of design based on the comps? Absolutely, absolutely. Because they are either priced themselves out of a neighborhood because just as Maria said, they get emotional, you know, and that's why you really want to leave it to the experts because we're looking at the comps and we're trying to keep everything within a budget. And so she has the selections, we get you the property, don't get emotional about it. And right. I, I do that for even uh, non-investors 
just um, you know traditional home buyers. Yeah, you know, right. don't get emotional. And, and, and you're absolutely right with that, Yolanda, because when you're looking at Facebook, and I know everybody in this business goes to Facebook and sees the different communications and the conversations. When you see somebody say, "Should I put this appliance package in here?" Rarely do you see somebody say, "What do the comps say?" Right? And, and that's it. It's really, really that What's simple, neighbor, right? Mm -hmm. It's really that simple. So don't don't try to to make it uh, worse than it is. Let's see here. Troy asks, "What is your advice on someone who had a contractor that is asking to adjust pricing due to the rising material costs once the bid has been approved?" It's uh, online, right? Yeah, yeah. Okay, yeah. Uh, for this is where where uh, your um, ten percent, your twenty percent uh, uh, contingency is for, because even uh, no matter how good the the contractor plan, uh, things can change drastically, and that's one thing for sure that that no one wants to lose in 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 uh, this type of business. Everyone is is to look for. Um, you know, do a living of it, mm -hmm. or, or or let's get the the uh, the investment. In it. So uh, sometimes it, it it will have to be used. That contingency will, will have to be used against some of the high price items that change because of the market price. Right. So recommendation: ten to twenty percent. Ten to twenty percent contingency. contingency. All right. So that's above material labor. Then your content contingency. Number. Yes. Okay. Great. Uh, let's see here. Herman asked, because of high prices and house for houses reported now, has rehabbing costs risen substantially also because of material costs? What do you guys think? What What do you think, Yolanda, in, in your opinion on the, on the realtor retail side? Everything. Sales are through the roof. We just got the, um, the, um, Numbers from the NAR National Association of Realtors homes are, I mean, we can't keep them on the floor. Right. And so uh, everything is uh, increasing. Everything is yeah, increasing. Prices, prices are going up. Okay. Uh, can we choose workers that are not on the GC's team, for example, plumbers, et cetera? If they were working with me, yes. Um, if they have the time, the energy, and they know this person's. Uh, they know the person uh, very well. Uh, I would say yes because um, they can they can save some money that that the contractor will charge just to uh, supervise that level that they right they're gonna do. On it. <clears throat> right. So I would say if they have a good reliable uh, contractor or uh, vendor, they can use it. Okay, great. So these are some questions, guys, that you guys brought in. Um, oh wait, we got one more here. How do you? Uh, let's see, that one is in the chat. Uh, let's see here. How do you analyze a deal? How do you make your profit when you buy a house? Okay, well, Jorge, everything, if, you, if we really look at it, um, investing is based on margins. And so if we start everything off at 100% and then you start to deduct your back end margins, your back end margins are going to then dictate your allowable offer based off of your validated repairs because your validated repairs is what's going to make or break your offer to the property. Um, we have these amazing analyzers guys that allow you to already know your offer and also what exit strategies to take because you have to know at the end of the day, is this even going to be profitable for you? Because some average, what the average rehab right now is pulling four to six months. And with that, you got to forecast four to six months from now, it may not be the same temperature, right? The climate may have changed. Um, I believe strongly that real estate doesn't change every six months. It changes every three months based on the, 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 the way people are buying and selling houses. And exactly, and currently here, and, and how long is that going to be? So, so right, the answer to that is, it's what are your margins and what's your profitability? That's what you need to gauge uh, what, what your numbers should be. <clears throat> Let's see here. Uh, oh, I think we had, did we have another one? Okay. I think there was another one in the chat. Uh, scroll down just a little bit. Uh, keep going up. Uh, uh, okay, there you go. So guys, uh, it's uh, 714. I'm gonna uh, have some questions from people that actually sent some questions in prior. 
to the um, to the webinar. And the questionnaire says, what is the best practice to call back a contractor whose flooring buckled and electric work left hot wires exposed? <laughs> what is the best practice to call back a contractor whose flooring buckled, whose flooring was messed up and electric work was left with wires exposed? Um, if, if, if the contractor is, uh, you know, they've been working with them, it shouldn't be an issue. Uh, like I always give like a year of warranty on my work. Um, so it shouldn't be an issue. They can call uh, and they say, because of the, uh, Usually because when, when your floor buckles, is because of the installation. If it's a laminate, you have to give a, a half inch clearance all around so the floor can adjust it. So it's not because of the weather, it's not because of the product, but because of the installation most of the time. So they should take care of it. It, it, it should be uh, under warranty. And flooring is a pretty technical um, process, right? You know, you just can't go to Home Depot for a Saturday with your cup of coffee and learn how to lay floor, right? Yes, Maria, we went we went to floor and decor, and uh, Samuel was saying that during the freeze, people's flooring was was getting messed up because the freeze was causing floors to go up, and it was not the installation; it was the it was the material that they were using to install. It was the material that was being used to install the floor wasn't all weather rated, and that's exactly what it was, guys. So. Your contractor who knows that kind of information, you know, would have been able to, to, hit, to help that. Um, <clears throat> how to bid on a property in a niche, uh, I'm assuming in a niche area. Um, guys, if you're going to bid on a property in a niche area, I always say one thing, get an appraisal. Get an appraisal. Comps may vary based on desirability. Comps may vary based on the other side of the neighborhood, sections of the neighborhood. You need to get an appraiser comps. Jolanda, you would pull comps, but then the appraiser is going to do what also? Pull comps. So when you go and make an offer, we have to think, what is the end sale going to do? Is the back-end buyer, Mr. Smith, the dog, the cat, the hamster, and the whole family, who are they going to use? The Wells Fargo is going to use the appraiser's comps and information. So in a niche area, guys, always go ahead and use and, and invest in an appraisal. It's probably the best money saver there. Here's another question. Is it better or more, more cost effective to hire a contractor for the entire build or remodel or to hire out framers, plumbers, electrical, drywall painters, et cetera, separately? <laughs> <laughs> yes. Yeah. Like, I, like, I, like I say, if, if they have the free time to manage the project themselves, and if they have good, reliable uh, vendors, they can do it. Uh, but if, if, if they don't want to have the headaches of calling every day, every one of them, see if they're in a job place or uh, uh, thinking that, assuming that they are there and they're not there uh, and, sure. and fight to them, then I recommend to go with the GC. Right. And guys, that's one of the things actually in the training that, that we do for all of our investors is we teach them to keep the identity of an investor. So ask yourself this question. We have all our members ask yourself, ask themselves this question. What do we know about labor and material costs? Do we have the time even to do this? And do we even know somebody who can do this? That's, that's kind of wild. I mean, I wouldn't even, I mean, that's why we rely on, on professionals to do that, guys. Um, here's, I love this one. When is it wise to hire a designer? At what point? In the, in the state? From the beginning. From the beginning? From the beginning. Okay. Because if, if, um, if you decide to go with a designer in the middle of the project, you're already spending money. As you did not leave, I have discounts from different vendors for this discount as to the investment. So they, they can save money. All right. Do you have a list of materials that you use on your projects to keep track on budget? Yes. Okay. Do you buy the materials or does the contractor purchase them? Oh, that's a big um, one. I like to order some of them and, and the big items are pretty cool. I mean, okay. I give the SP number, money, and he's ready to purchase. And, and guys, I've seen, I've seen Maria and Jesus work together on a project with a member. It really 
their conversation, especially if it's not Maria or Jesus, always try to get your project manager or selection designer in communication with your contractor because at the end of the day, if there's a problem, it's handled and then a report gets given back to you. It's not like, hey, we have this problem. It's we had this problem and here's the solution that was done, right? Now, Eric, got one final question for you guys because we're getting close to here our time. Um, you as an investor and when you go look at a property in your eyes, when do you take the hat off of being a home inspector and being an investor? For somebody else for or for some, myself? For, for somebody else. You don't. Yeah, exactly. You show up as an inspector because that's what you're providing. Exactly. And why did I, why did I post that question, guys? Is that you're going to get so many people that are going to take that role as a vendor, but then while they're there, they're going to say, this is a great one to jump in. Right? That's not a validated point of, of risk. Your, your risk should be based off of numbers. Take the emotion side out of it compile your information and your data. And, and most of all, I say try to, and, and one thing I always say is um, emotions lie to you, numbers don't. Um, and, and I think one of the biggest issues that I think most investors fall in at the beginning of their careers is that they try to fit a square peg into a round hole, right? And it gets emotional and it gets very emotional. So one of the biggest invites that we can say is Use your resources. Talk to the people that are out there. If you have a contractor that doesn't want to answer your questions, don't work with them, right? Your realtor, your home inspector, don't work with them because at the end of the day, you're interviewing them because that's the line of communication you're going to have with them. Can you imagine in mid-project dealing with somebody who you couldn't communicate from the beginning? Uh, let's see, I think we've got uh, a Q&A. No, in the, in the questions, okay. So guys, if you guys want to know a little bit more about us, uh, feel free that we're gonna go ahead and share the screen on the presentation to get the contact information for our speakers. <clears throat> and let's see here, uh, we got Maria Rodriguez. She's at homeselectionconsulting at gmail.com. I apologize, I missed that. At, oh, her phone number guys is 504-920-3809. And then Yolanda Thomas, she's at yolandathomasre at gmail.com. And your phone number is 832-447-7740. Do you have a webpage or anything that they can go to? It's the HAR webpage. So har.com backslash Yolanda Thomas. Excellent. And for Maria, you're at home consulting selection.com. Home selection home consult consulting com. Com. The That's the website. Eric Christie, you're at info at boxerinspections.com. Boxer inspections, the name. Dogs. You have boxers. All right, there. I knew it. I knew it. You got two of them. My phone number wrong. Oh, and his phone number is wrong. What's the phone number? It's 281. 281. 783. 783. 3030. 30. All right, guys. And Jesus, you're at Martinez Home Services at Outlook.com. And that's the correct number. That's right? correct. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Okay. Oh, I think there's a Q and A. Some is there a no? Uh, okay. Yeah. All right. All right, guys. And then thank you so much for joining us. If we can go to the the next slide. Uh, oh, I think we got a, a. Yep. So, guys, thank you for joining us for this webinar. We apologize for all the technical difficulties that we had at the beginning and here during. Um, also, if you can, go ahead and scan that QR code or visit us at InvestorRealEstateTraining.com. There's a lot of information there. We have information also from our vendors. We'd love to work with every single person just to know that you're taking off on the right foot. Uh, we did go national at the beginning or sorry, during the middle of 2020. So we also service everybody around the country. Um, we're in uh, YouTube, Instagram, and Facebook. And feel free to drop us a line. We're happy to help you guys out. And I really want to thank you guys for joining us. I hope this was okay. And we apologize for the, the mistakes being made. But I, I can tell you definitely for me and everybody at the SVF family, we thank you very much for helping us. Because at the end of the day, hopefully we can help your guys' business grow. Thank you. Thank you for joining us, everybody.